Hi, I'm Random Trashy, welcome to the channel. So today we're going to talk about this, this is the Pulsar Challenger head mount and night vision monocular. This is a Gen 1 Plus monocular, I'm just going to spin the box around, you can see it flip down here. But this comes with everything you're going to need for a Gen 1 Plus night vision setup. Generation 1 devices are mainly the ones I get asked about on the channel. It's guys that are looking to take their first step into night vision. They always ask me about these really cheap devices, 100, 200 pounds. They're never going to give you what you want from them. Um, I've looked at quite a few of them. A friend of mine actually come along to an event over a weekend with one of these really cheap £120 digital night vision devices. And to be completely honest, it was a really old, cheap phone camera with a screen in the middle of the device with a lens behind it and it just had the brightness turned up. You couldn't see anything. It was very hard to make out any detail. And again, you're looking at a screen like this big. So the detail out in front of it, you know, you couldn't make out an entire building or a tire door. It really just was um, was useless and it was wasted money for him. When we talk about kind of generation one plus devices, they are at the lower end of the scale. Now, I wanted to clear up some questions around generation um, and how night vision is described because a few people thought that generation one meant that it was the oldest stuff and it doesn't work like that. This isn't to do with age. This is to do with the amount of ambient light that's raised by the device. So we have generation one, generation two, and generation three. They do come across in different names. Sometimes generation two is called two plus or two advanced or whatever, and you get three plus, um, three plus plus, three, uh, gen four, loads of stuff like that. But really you have gen one, gen two, gen three, and that's not about age. So gen one is not the stuff that was made yonks ago. Um, that is just the stuff that ray, the, the, the tubes, the, um, the night vision, binoculars, binoculars, whatever it may be. Generation one is just the one that raises the ambient light the least. Then you have generation two that raises it a little bit more than one and three more than two. And that's kind of how generation works. There is a lot more that goes into this. The science and the way that these statistics work around night vision is mind blowing. I really can't get into it personally because I don't know it that well. But I was taught about night vision in, the, in, in this way. Um, night vision is a tool. It enables you to be more functional out on the ground. It is kind of a battlefield enhancer. It is one of those items that will enable you to do things that you couldn't do with a naked eye, whether that be detection of a target, whether that be manoeuvrability, whatever. So I was taught about night vision in this way. Sight, manoeuvrability, engagement. Now, if you watch some different videos on YouTube, you can find them labelled under different things, but essentially that's the three categories that is broken down when you're talking about the use of night vision. Does it help you see? And we're not talking about seeing a target, that will come later. We're talking about what you see in front of you, what you are unable to take in, and that affects your movement, and then your movement affects your engagement of a target. So I'm gonna give you a basic example, and this is kind of how I was taught. I'm standing on the edge of a wood line. The wood line is where you guys are, and I'm looking into a forest. With my naked eyes, I can only see about five meters into that woodland. I can't tell if there's any enemies in there, if there's any obstacles, what's beyond that five meters. Night vision, even Gen 1 night vision will enable you to see a little bit further, dependent on the conditions, but we'll get into that. So let's just say, with the night vision flipped down, I can look into that woodland and I can see that there is a very deep river in front of me. There is a cliff off to my right hand side and there is a road and a bridge to my left. When you are looking into that woodland instantly, your sight has been changed. So that is going to affect your movement because you can see further, you can see the obstacles. You're not going to head off the cliff. You're not going to go through this deep river. You're going to sort of skulk along the road line use the bridge to get you across uh, you know the um, you know across that river as efficiently as possible and then on to engage your target so when we talk about kind of sight we're talking about the capability to see what you can't see with the naked eye and that is obviously going to affect your advance or your movement when we talk about engagement it covers quite a few things if there was a target beyond all of these woodlands and we're going to use the the, the road to get there we've already started changing our engagement because if we didn't have the night vision we're going to probably press straight on through we're going to have to cross a river we're not going to know about the bridge we're also not going to know about the dangers of the cliff we're going to keep advancing towards the target so we're already beginning to move towards engagement when we talk about engagement it is not just seeing the target and using the night vision to engage them we're talking about 
how that is then done. So an IR laser is my favourite choice, uh, like the favourite choice of myself. I run an IR laser on my gun, that means that no one with their naked eye can see the laser going on them, only other night vision users. And even then it's very like, clicked on, clicked off, clicked on, clicked off, very quick. So no one can trace that back to where I am. Also, all of the rest of my team are night vision, so if I'm going to engage a target, we've done that manoeuvre, we've pushed through the woodlands, we've used the bridge to avoid you know, going through that river, we're kind of trying to advance on the target as, as efficiently as possible, we can use that um, IR laser then to notify people of objects, we can point out vehicles, we can point out buildings, the other guys can see it, I can see it, um, and then we can use that as a separate tool. When we talk about engagement, I put the IR laser on a target, I pull my trigger, I can see the BBs, you know, pretty much travelling down the laser towards the target, I know that he's engaged, I can then see that the, the, the target is taken down, and that is kind of the three effective um, categories that night vision will help you, obviously, if you didn't have that night vision on, you would find it harder to see, you would find it harder to manoeuvre, uh, and then when you get down to engaging that target, you are going to be either using an iron sight or an optic, and then you've got to pretty much guess as to the alignment of your barrel to where the target is, and just kind of hope those BBs travel down, without using things like white light and that sort of thing. You know, we're just talking about strict engagement. So night vision really will change that game up, um, and like I've mentioned before, you know, the different generations, they are organised in a quite a, <laughs> a quite a clever way really because Gen 1 is cheapest, it's the opening point, Gen 2 is kind of the next stage, Gen 3 is like the ultimate. And when we're talking about pricing, this unit uh, and full setup here is about £300. This is the cheapest that I would go. This is the baseline unit. Thanks to the guys over at Thomas Jacks, this is what um, when we talk, spoke about the entry level device, what I would recommend, this is what kind of got brought up. Because it enables you to wear the device straight away, because you your full night vision set up all in one box. Moving on from that, Thomas Jacks provide everything all the way up to Gen 3 and you can spend £20,000 on night vision with them if you choose to, but they will supply absolutely everything all the way through. But I was talking about entry level stuff. So moving on to the device, um, it comes in this nice packaging inside that box, got a nice little soft case for it, got a strap around it as well just in case you want to throw it over your shoulder, over your back or whatever, but 9 times out of 10 this is going to be in a bag, got a nice leather clasp on the front, we're going to open this unit up and have a look at it. One of the nice things about Gen 1 devices um, over anything else is the nice light polymer bodies, these are much lighter than you would find with a Gen 2 or a Gen 3 device, got nice rails top and bottom for mounting them onto the head unit, we've got the battery here, runs on a CR123A battery, so I'm just going to unspin this, it should have a battery in it from where I was doing some testing, yeah and we've got a nice lithium CR123 3A in there. Nice waterproof seal on here as well so you haven't got to worry about it getting wet. I wouldn't want to exactly leave it in a puddle for a long period of time but rain or anything like that it's not going to affect it. We've got the optical adjust adjustment up front so this is your focus adjustment and then you've got your eyepiece adjustment here as well and that nicely clicks into place so you know that you're not going to move that around. You've got your nice eye cup there as well and that's to stop that green glow from the, from the uh, tube coming back towards the eye. So if you have this on the right hand side, for example, it's gonna shield any of that glow. Nice hard body, you know, at the end of the day, these are really nice devices. I've had a look at quite a lot of the Pulsar stuff and they're really well made. They are a really great little unit. Now, obviously the key thing about this is the footage through the device and as the disclaimer always goes, trying to film through these things is extremely difficult. As you can see, the size of the lens there is very, very small. You know, a lot, probably about a bit smaller than my thumbnail and the front optical lens is, is small as well. So you know you're gonna get quite a tight, field of vision um, from this, but the enhancement is quite good. Also, it has a built-in IR laser, uh, IR light as well, or IR illuminator, which is nice. Up the top here, see this little lens just on the front there flashing. That is an, uh, an IR light, and essentially that can light up the surrounding area around you. The issue of that, other night vision users can see that light, but if you know that the team that you're going up against does not have a night vision capability, then you can switch that on and it will just illuminate everything in front of you. And I'll give you an example of that when we jump to the footage. This is only part of the package, obviously, we're looking at the head mount. Now these head mounts often referred to as skull crushers. I used to run a skull crusher a lot, and for the simple reason that they are so compact. Rather than carrying a helmet around with you with all the mounting capabilities on it, 
This is a very nice simple device, just straps over the top of your head. Now I haven't set this up for myself yet, but I'm just gonna kind of throw it over the top of my head to let you kind of see what it's all about. Get a tin strap underneath, tighten it up around the top of your head. We've got this arm on the front here, which enables you to put the night vision in. If you've pressed the button on the side, it allows you to flip the night vision up. And what we're gonna do is just flip that arm down and we'll just put the night vision on here. Quite simple, there's just a big screw on the top of it. I'm gonna flip that over and it's as quick as that. The night vision's then on, we're gonna spin this lens round. We've got the lateral adjustment here to get it back in front of my eye, so I'm just gonna move that nice and back and that is probably about where I would have it. As you can see, not really got it tightened up or anything, sits nicely in front of my eyes. By the time I've got this squared into a good position, that is gonna be absolutely perfect. A ton of adjustment on here for height and everything, and then again, when you wanna flick that away, you can just fold that up like so, if you, you know get into any areas where there's gonna be loads of light in front of you. Again, you can just flip that back down. Really nice unit, all works extremely well, You know, it's tried and tested. Probably get this set up really nice if you spend a little bit of time with it. But what I'm gonna do now is jump into some of the footage. I'm gonna give you a comparison between this and the Gen 2 so you can see what it's like, and then I will do a full wrap up at the end. So guys, just wanna give it a wrap up on that night vision footage. As you can see, it's very difficult for me to film through those devices. Had an absolute nightmare trying to get it nice and clear for you. Again, it is much clearer through the device. It's much brighter through the device. It's very hard for me to be able to film through the uh, night vision lens with my DSLR, which was a bit of a pain to set up, but hopefully you can see the impact that the IR illuminator and the IR pointer has on both uh, devices. It is much more prominent, much more brighter, and has much more impact on the Gen 2 Plus, but as you can see through both devices, the IR pointer works extremely well, and if you had that dialed in, then you would definitely be able to engage targets and take some people down. So that is point one. Point two, if you do want to invest in night vision, if it is a large investment for you, make sure you head along to some of the open days and some of the roadshow events that Thomas Jacks do. Thomas Jacks travel the country day and night for you to be able to go and try out different devices. They recently had a night vision event where they took on along a load of night vision devices, a load of devices um, for thermal and they had an open evening. You could go there, have a coffee with the guys, chat to some of the team and have a look through all of their devices that they have just to make you more comfortable with spending the money, the you know you know what you're going to get, and you can experience all of the different devices. Also, you know you might be looking too far for what you need. You might be able to go out, go to one of their device, uh, one of their events, and actually buy a device cheaper than the one that you are looking at, just for you know the suitability for the purpose that you're going to use it for. So if you do want to find out more about those events, make sure you head over to the Thomas Jacks Limited Facebook page. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Loads more videos coming to the channel. Loads more stuff from the guys over at Thomas Jacks. If you have any night vision questions, any thermal questions, anything like that, please make sure you drop it in the comments box below. A like on this video is always much appreciated. It just shows the guys over at Thomas Jacks as well that you guys are enjoying the content. And for me, it absolutely helps solidify the relationship with those guys and it means I can bring more content to the channel. They have a massive arsenal of products that I'd love to get my hands on. Loads of tracking stuff. They've got loads more GPS-based units. They've got some really Gucci night vision stuff, mounting um, night vision to weapons. They've got a ton of stuff I'd love to get my hands on and bring to the channel so if you have enjoyed this content please make sure you drop the video a like if you're not subscribed to the channel you can subscribe by clicking down the bottom right hand corner that little subscribe icon or you can go back to my channel and check out a ton more content on there 
Loads more videos coming to the channel as previously mentioned. Um, really excited on some of the projects that I have got coming up over the winter. Winter's my favourite time of year to play. If you guys want to come and have an airsoft event with me, you want to play a game or you want to invite me along to your site, anything like that, just again make sure you drop me a comment. You can hit me up on Twitter and on Facebook. Um, I'm always on Facebook so if you do have a question you want to get over to me quickly, if you're looking at purchases for Christmas and stuff, then make sure that you hit me up on Facebook. Then uh, it's the fastest way to get hold of me and uh, I'll make I respond straight away. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Thanks again and I'll see you all soon.